What did Jesus Christ do as the mediator? We're going to look at that in today's daily devotion. It is Friday, April 24th, 2020. I'm Pastor John Blevins, and I'm thankful that you're here with us. All right, well, we're in our daily devotion. The week is coming towards an end. Looking forward to the beginning of a new week coming in the Lord's day right around the corner. Well, let's dive into God's Word as we uh, get ready for our devotion, how we're going to answer this question, where we're going to look, how we're going to understand that. Turning in 1 Timothy chapter 2, we're going to read verses 5 and 6. For there is one God, and there is one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all, which is the testimony give, given at the proper time. This is one of, uh, one of our study passages that are down there in the description. Hopefully you'll take time to read through those and reflect on them prayerfully. Uh, as always, there are also several passages summarized coming together uh, that summarize and help us to understand the answer to our question as we look to our theology portion for the day. We're back in Westminster Larger Catechism looking at question 57. What benefits hath Christ procured by his mediation? Christ, by his mediation, hath procured redemption with all other benefits of the covenant of grace. So as we saw there in in 1 Timothy, the Lord Jesus Christ is the one and only mediator. And we're going to answer the question, what did Jesus Christ do as the mediator? But before we get there, let's remind ourselves what a mediator is. What does it mean that the Lord Jesus Christ is a mediator between God and men? The only mediator. Well, a mediator is someone that comes between uh, two parties. He, uh, that mediator would then seek to bring through mediation. Uh, there is a, if there's a need for a mediator, there's a, there's a problem that needs to be resolved. So this go-between comes between the two parties and helps to bring reconciliation. Hope comes and works to bring uh, a solution to whatever the problem may be. So in the reality of who the Lord Jesus Christ is, He's the one and only mediator between God and man. Because you remember that God and man are separated after the fall completely. God is holy, man is sinful. There's a separation there that is uh, that can't be uh, rectified. Sinfulness, sinful man, sin, the penalty of sin being death, holy, righteous God. Sinful man in his sinful nature, uh, sinful humans are in naturally in rebellion against God. God is the sovereign King of kings and Lord of lords over all things. But the Lord Jesus Christ is the one and only mediator between God and man. He is the only mediator, meaning there is no one else. There's not another. There's not multiple roads that lead to Rome. There are not multiple paths that lead to God. Only the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the God-man. He is the only one that can fulfill this role. And as we read in, in our uh, scripture passage, which gets to our answer, you know, what is it the Lord Jesus Christ did as a mediator? Well, he ransomed for himself a people. He went about redeeming. So those who were dead in their sins, and you remember the scriptures tell us that the penalty of sin is death. This, this debt that is owed to a holy God, it is the Lord Jesus Christ who came redeeming those people, paying the penalty for the sins of all those people. That great multitude is, is, is explained to Abraham uh, when God interacts with him describing the, the covenant. More people than sand on the beaches, more people than the stars in the sky. And you'll be reminded that maybe for you, you walk outside, there's a street light, you look up, you see a couple stars. But if you go out into the country 
on a clear night. The stars are uncountable. So, Lord Jesus Christ as mediator, He ransomed for Himself the people. He redeemed them. He, he is the one that, that accomplished the act of removing us from the grasp of the kingdom of Satan, that we were enslaved to sin. He is the one that took us from that kingdom and brought us into the kingdom of God. And there are many things that come in that mediation, uh, the, the benefits of the covenant of grace. So there's you know, salvation, there's justification, salvation, there's sanctification, adoption, all, all these things that are happening. We, Christian, you, you, you are able to cry out to God the Father, Abba Father, to come to Him because of what the Lord Jesus Christ has done. Because of Him, you are adopted into God's family because of what He has done. And you're given life in Him. All we have is because we're in union with Christ, those who uh, the Lord has saved and we trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Everything we have, all of our victory, all of our blessings, all of our benefit, all the inheritance, everything that comes from salvation that we have to look forward to, our resurrection, life and life abundant that we have right now, all these things are in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's because of Him as our mediator. He has done all these things, and it's in His act as mediator that He redeemed us, and we've gotten all of these many, many benefits. So as we move into our application, our meditation, what we're going to kind of grapple with today, what I want you to think about is you're going to hear, and you do hear, a lot of people who claim that there are all different types of ways for you to be uh, brought into a, a, a right standing with God, with the universe, with your neighbors, with the powers that be. I mean, whatever, whatever is brought, all of it is false. They're all false gods, false idols. And it's everywhere. You know, we're, so without a doubt, we are, we are a people, a, a, a human, as humanity, we, we are created to worship and have a relationship uh, with God. And after the fall, with us in our sinful nature, uh, we, don't, we don't not seek to worship and have relation. Uh, we just are in rebellion and don't want to do it with God. <laughs> And that's what we see all around us, all this craziness as people see they're always worshiping something. And you're going to hear it because they're going to be selling it to you. And then, of course, not on top of that, you got Satan and fallen angels and your own flesh and all these things. You're going to hear that crazy mess. But what that does is gives you the opportunity each time you hear that and see it, you be reminded and encouraged. No, no, there is only one mediator between God and man. And I know what he accomplished in his mediation. He redeemed me. Praise the Lord for that. And then you can take advantage of these opportunities, these points of contact, and you can, you can talk to others and let them know, no, 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 actually, let me tell you about the only, the only real mediator between God and man, the only Redeemer that there is that brings true and real saving eternal peace with God. And you can share the gospel with them prayerfully by God's grace. The Spirit will be moving. So, be encouraged. Be encouraged. Oh Lord, our Father in heaven, Almighty God, we're thankful for the many blessings that come from your grace, salvation, the adoption into your family. We're thankful the Spirit indwells us and sanctifies us and brings us into union with our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, Lord, we love you. Amen. Well, I'd love to hear from you. Leave a comment, like, subscribe, share with friends and family, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. May the Lord bless and keep you.